For the martial arts training portion of this video, Adam has very kindly asked me to provide some of my expertise. So to start with, it's important to note that Bruce Lee himself said that his physique was more as a result of his martial arts training, which was his primary goal rather than for purely aesthetics. However, there are numerous accounts from friends and people that knew Bruce recalling how he was very proud of his physique and would often show people different muscles that had been developing. So there are some elements of that in there as well. Now the things I'm going to be including here will be mainly centered around improving martial arts performance, explosiveness and agility. It's important to develop a fine balance and not focus too heavily upon purely strength and conditioning as somebody who's training for a sporting type activity like Bruce was himself. And this is a really good clip of Conor McGregor here talking about Bruce and comparing him to some of today's stiff and overly conditioned fighters. I've no doubt he would have been world champion in, in, in MMA, no doubt. He's fluid, he's loose, he's fast. His movement is fluid, it's efficient, it's functional. So many guys are addicted to strength and conditioning and just get bulked up and stiff and slow. And Bruce was free, his body was nimble. Bruce made a major change to his training philosophy after the 1964 fight with Wong Jack Man, primarily from building upon the Wing Chun style. He felt that although he'd won that fight, his performance was neither crisp nor efficient, and that by the end of the fight he was considerably winded, signifying to himself that he was far from in perfect condition. And this is the point when he began to dissect and create his own way in the form of Jeet Kune Do. And also since that year, there's a distinct change in Bruce's appearance as he began focusing heavily upon cardiovascular training on top of his martial arts work. I feel that Bruce's interval training training for the martial artist program that's featured in The Art of Expressing the Human Body to be spot on actually. So this was Bruce's own personal program according to the book and I really like this, he's included a lot of very important elements and you can really make this your own as well. Lee defines strength as the ability of the body to exert great force, while power as the ability to release an explosive force to produce a quick, sudden movement of the body with maximum effort. And power also involves the rate of speed at which the force is expressing itself. In other words, power is the marriage of strength and velocity. It's one thing to build strength through weight training, but another to be able to have your body apply power in the right amount and with the right timing. Even the best techniques are useless if you don't have the power to execute them effectively. This is where the layman myth continues to flourish in that people with large muscles must be able to strike powerfully by default by way of their size, which is false. So in order to develop this, we'll be using the age-old heavy bag for the main portion of the upcoming program. However, a word of caution on becoming too overly confident as a result of continually using the heavy bag. A live opponent is not going to stand there and allow you the luxury of full preparation. Keep moving as if you're facing a real person, holding your guard high as you train, moving in and out with rapid footwork, practicing head movement and not overly lunging in with your strikes. The heavy bag is an amazing tool, but the way you can hit the bag is not the way you can hit a moving opponent. So be mindful of what it's used for and its limits. So now we're going to take a look at the sample training program that I've put together. So first we've got the warm up which consists of jump rope and agility ladder. Next we have the shadow boxing rounds. One of them is a warm up and the second is more intense. Maintain good form throughout. Sometimes Bruce was known to split his training days into hand and leg technique days so we're doing that here as well. So for one of the martial arts training days you'll do the boxing rounds and for the other one you will do the kickboxing rounds and all of these rounds are for three minutes with a one minute rest in between. I've outlined five on here but I recommend five to eight rounds if you wish to make it a bit longer. Now this is just a sample program that I've put together, you can follow it exactly or perhaps change things out a little by switching some of the rounds for sparring or pad work. The way to get the most out of this workout is to hit the heavy bag with real intent, meaning to continually push yourself to get better and better and condition yourself in this way. One of the simplest but most overlooked ways of improving your explosiveness is simply by forcing your body to move quickly again and again and again as you strike. So now we'll begin the workout. To warm up, we're just going to be doing jump rope for 5 to 10 minutes. Start slowly and then build up to a moderate pace. Now jump rope is great for coordination and footwork and it can also be used to build stamina as well if you want to do it more intensely. If you're proficient with using a jump rope then you can try all different types of movements and footwork patterns but if it's something that's new for you, just stick to maintaining a basic rhythm throughout until you've worked up a light sweat. So also included as part of the warm up is the use of the agility ladder which is a tool I really really like to use. This is something I always like to start with because it's really good for improving your agility and explosiveness as well which are keys in martial arts training. Rather than trying to explain all of the different things I'm doing here it's probably best you just watch them they're quite self explanatory. What you want to do here is you want to do each of these exercises all the way through and then repeat it again two to three times getting faster on each round. 
The key things that you want to make sure of here are that you're not taking too big steps too far away from the ladder, so you're not wasting too much energy. You want to try and get that movement as quick and as efficient as possible. This is an example of me doing all the exercises a little bit quicker than the first time and if you're going at this speed you should really feel it start to burn your calves which is going to improve your explosiveness. These are just some simple dynamic swings to prepare our body for the main part of our heavy back workout. I don't personally like to do a super extensive warm up with loads of stretching when I start just because I kind of prefer to warm up as I go but if you've got loads of injuries and stuff like that you might want to do a little bit more. Firstly, we have the shadow boxing rounds. When done correctly, shadow boxing can have huge benefits on many elements of training, including technique, speed, endurance, and footwork. For this first round, we're just going to be loosening up the body, but maintaining good economical form or economy of motion. This is something to really be mindful of throughout the upcoming training as well. It means always keeping the technique crisp and tight even during warm-up rounds. Awkward technique is a result of lack of refinement and more energy is being expended than is needed, resulting in a slow and clunky technique. Energy is being discharged through unnecessary exertion and then correction and this can be overcome by understanding the bodily mechanics and repetition over time. For the second round we're going to pick up the pace and push ourselves, remain completely relaxed to throw your techniques cleanly and explosively. When performing combos be sure to fully extend the strikes and not cut them short in favour of speed and weakening their potential. So for round one we're going to do straight punches only, so this can be any combinations of jab cross, jab jab cross, four straights and so on. As you can see I'm not throwing full power and full speed all the time, I do throw it at intervals and then move around the bag a little bit, practicing head movement and footwork as well. So you want to keep moving the whole time, don't think you have to just stand in one place and just smash the bag. By no means though is this an invitation to take it easy, Bruce noted in his own writings that you should continually push yourself and I agree with that sentiment 100%. I think so many martial artists fail to progress quickly because they just aren't putting enough intensity into their training. So you can see what I'm doing here, this is a good level for me and you can adapt that to your own training as well. Round number two, nice and simple, same thing, but we're just going to be adding in hook punches. And we're going to be adding body shots and level changes now onto that. So coming down to the stomach area, utilising those liver shots. It's a really important shot to practice because when done correctly and powerfully, a liver shot can completely incapacitate an opponent and end a fight, as is often seen in boxing matches. <laughs>
So now for round four, we're going to be adding in elbows and other hand techniques as well. Some of this might look a little bit strange, but what I'm doing here is some things from all different types of styles. So there's some Thai elbows, there's also some stuff from Filipino trapping in here as well, which is what later became part of Jeet Kune Do as well. And round number five, the last round, is just any and all hand techniques. So it's a freestyle round, and you want to pick up the pace a little bit on this one and push yourself. So for round number one, we're gonna do a simple five hit combination. And that consists of jab, cross, hook, hook, low, rear round kick. Now I'm doing the hooks at different positions on here. So you can do them head height and body height, or you can do two body hooks and so on. If you can see as well, I don't always throw the combination. So I'm not just doing the combo, then doing the combo again. Sometimes I do it, and then sometimes I'll move around and throw some other random techniques, and then I'll go into the combination again. But essentially, I'm working upon that one combo throughout this round. <laughs> This round I'm working an 11 hit combination. The moves that I'm doing here are jab, split entry, which is where you parry and strike simultaneously, cross, lead, low round kick, cross, hook, cross, rear low round kick, double jab, cross. Now you don't have to follow this exact combination, it's just an example, but just remember the principle that you want to implement a long combination for this round. And this one similarly is a 10 hit combination. It looks similar to the other one, but it's actually different. So the techniques that I'm doing are jab, cross, hook, jab, cross, shuffle, lead leg, round kick, cross, hook, cross, rear leg, round kick. I like doing long combinations like this just because it conditions you to move at more of a fighting pace and trains your body to move in intense bursts for longer periods of time. A nice and simple round that doesn't need much explanation, it's just power kicks. So make sure you've got a lot of intention behind these kicks.
just like with the last boxing round, we're now doing a completely freestyle kickboxing round. So using all different types of techniques and just like before as well, keep the pace nice and high. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did please follow me on Instagram I've got a lot of different training clips on there and also you can send me a message if you need any help with the workout in the video. So the full building Bruce program looks like this. Other things to consider make sure you warm up thoroughly before every workout and get plenty of recovery time and rest in between. Aim to eat a balanced and nutritious diet, aiming for maintenance calories and consume about one gram of protein for every one pound of body weight to support muscle growth and to avoid becoming too lean. Finally, you should incorporate some kind of warm ups and mobility training into this routine. For improving mobility and flexibility, do your static stretches at the end of each workout, not at the beginning. Use any routine for your stretching cool down, but I've shared a few in my Nightwing training and in the Batman Begins program to so check those out if you want something ready made. So thanks a ton for watching guys, I hope you found this video useful and interesting. If you did then please leave a like, share it around, that helps me out immensely. Comment down below and let me know what you think of this program, if there's anything I missed. And of course stay tuned, hit subscribe if you want more like this. There's lots of cool stuff on the way soon, including another Batman program. But yeah, thanks a ton for watching this one and bye for now.